Afternoon, um, I'm Gerard Mostert. I'm a South African who immigrated north to England and I've been there for quite a while. And I'm working at Warwickshire County Cricket Club. And I'm, uh, yeah, that's it. And can you take on to the next? Um... Okay, on the 10th of November 1991, um, India played against South Africa. At, um, in Calcutta at Eden Gardens and I was a first year student watching it on television and I was really fascinated by the crowd's passion and love for the game and I still remember it clearly and I'm really privileged to be here today and to talk to you about injuries in a game that you all love. Thank you very much for the invitation. I started my career at Edspaston in 2001 and um, on the coaching staff and support staff we were only four people. Today there is a marked improvement in our facilities and exactly the same with our support staff. I'm the head of the sports science department and I oversee um, the department and I um, feedback into the technical coaches as well as the uh, director of cricket and the important things for me is you need to have a network of trusted physicians that can be easily reached to help you to get the uh, accurate diagnosis, the correct treatment and the rehabilitation and to get your players back onto the park as soon as possible. The second thing is you need to be, have the ability to work with people. When players are injured they are very um, vulnerable and they have worries about the seriousness of the injury and it is your job to help them to get um, the normal function back in their, their body and get back onto the sports field to perform at the top level. Um, when um, every year some new um, players join the staff and they are very insecure unse un and um, worried about their um, performances and it's important to educate these players about um, their lifestyle, their diet and also their preparation and it's, it's very important to help them in that initial phase because it's a, it's a steep learning curve. Then a, another important thing is to sit down with the coaches and to discuss all the players uh, strengths, weaknesses and face physical capabilities and then came up with a plan how to get them better so that they can perform better. And then the communica communication with your players and with your coaches is very important, especially the bowling coach, because the bowling coach works closely with the fast bowlers and they are most likely to get injured during a season. And then the last thing is you do a lot of traveling, so you need the support and the, under and the understanding wife. So basically to sum up, my job is to fill the gap between the sports world and the medical world and to make that transition as smooth as possible. Working in sport is a great adventure and you experience some really great um, experiences like winning a trophy at Lords or see a young player join them dressing room and he's really uncomfortable and you make him feel comfortable and then you see that player slowly develop and one day he's playing a, for an international team. That is really a great satisfaction. But sometimes there's also some enormous pressures you need to decide on if it's a player fit to play or not. And what the people re always think is from an injury back to playing onto the, the sports field, it's just a straight line. But it's never like that. There's always some obstacles and some problems along the way. But it's your job to help a player to, to get over these um, difficult times, to motivate them, to be a friend for them, to sometimes have a um, firm word with them and say, listen, that's not good enough. So you need to always try to push them as hard as you can to get the best out of them, uh, just to be a good bloke to them. And, oh... And the reward is there. We've, we were the most successful team in the last decade in the county circuit. Uh, 
about it. Okay, so working in cricket, it's a very unique game. It's a, it's an individual game within a sports team, and it's a skill-based game. It's a power sport. It's an endurance sport. It's a mentally, it's a tough game, and it tests you. And I would say it's almost like it mimics life. You've got ups and downs. So there's a lot of physical demands on a on a player, and I want to show you. Um, this is an example of a first-class player. Um, it's a fast bowler, and in only one innings of a match, he bowled 35 overs. He, he spent eight, more than eight and a half hours on the field, and he completed the distance of 31, more than 31 kilometers. Okay, the physical demands, I've talked about that. Then, as a bowler run in, and he delivers a, a, a ball, seven to eight times his, his body weight is going through his front, from, through his front foot. So that's just an enormous amount of force that's, that's going through his body. And the common um, general consideration is that um, Cricket is a very low injury risk sport, but, however, fast bowlers have an injury pre uh, prevalence of approximately 15%, and that's very similar to contact sports like rugby or Aussie rules football. And now, um, a right arm fast bowler, these will be the, the injuries that they will get. They will develop um, shoulder impingement symptoms, they will de develop left side strains, they will develop left lower back stress fractures, they will develop left um, high incision tendinopathies, their front foot will develop a patella tendinopathy, and their posterior ankle um, impingements in the left ankle. Last year we had quite a freak injury. Um, one of our players developed an incomplete stress fracture of the lateral border of his scapula. And then if you can see on the right bottom corner, there's an indentation there to show where the injury was. And it's very rare. Now, I want to talk to you about fast bowling and the lumbar spine stress fractures. Here we can see a complete stress fracture of a, of a partial uh, pars interarticularis. Now, this is a very common injury in fast bowlers. And it usually happens in younger fast bowlers. They will experience pain in their non-dominant lower back. They will start with some stiffness that doesn't ease off with stretches. And um, cl uh, classically, is these, their pain will ease off between 10 to 14 days after the injury. But as soon as you ask him to bowl again, the symptoms will reoccur. Um, special tests that we will do on them is we will do um, a, a stalk test or we do, do a quadrant test. And a quadrant test is where you take it back into extension, you rotate it to the left, and then you do side flexion, and that will elicit the pain. This is a microscopic um, picture of a stress fracture in the bone. And then on the right hand side, you can see the pro how the, lumbar, the stress fracture in the lumbar spine will progress. At the top, there is no fracture, but I would say um, each delivery that they bowl is like you use a hammer onto a, a wall. And every time you tick on the wall, there will, there will be some micro damage, and it will just slowly accumulate. And then it will slowly injure make a small little injury on the bone, and that will cause a stress reaction. If you keep on bowling, it will escalate, and then it will turn into an incomplete unilateral stress fracture with a small little crack. If you continue fur with further bowling, a complete crack will appear, and that will, is, will be a, a complete unilateral stress fracture. Um, the ECB done a survey on um, all the bowlers um, between 2010 and 2016, 
and 46 bowlers did break down with stress fractures of their lumbar spine. And within those 46 bowlers, they um, identified 57 symptomatic stress fractures because some of these bowlers had stress fractures at various levels or also on both sides. The average age of these um, bowlers were 22 to 23 years of age and their average time lost was 259 days lost. And you can see the average age in here is between 18 and 22 years of age. Okay, I've done that one. So we can see here, yeah, the most common stress factors that happen occurred in L4 and L5 on the non-dominant side of the spine. Now I want to talk to you about the characteristics of bone. When bone is exposed to load, it will, it will form a remodeling and it's a lifelong process where the mature bone tissue is removed from the skeleton and replaced by new bone tissue. This is a, a cross section of a American baseball thrower and you can through his humerus and you can see on the right bottom corner that there is an increase in the bone mass and that happens through modeling of the bone. The next slide is just how the lumbar spine is adapted to fast bowling. You can see when a bowler is bowling and he's doing um, extension of his back, left side flexion and rotation, it uh, put a load onto the spine. Then the, the bone stiffness is the ability of the, bow, of the bone to resist deformation, so it will keep staying strong. But if a load is too big, then it will put a strain onto the bone, and that will, if you keep on bowling, will cause micro damage and then lead to a stress fracture. If a load is not too much, it will go towards the right of the, the picture or the slide and it will form more bone and then it will increase the bone stiffness. So our aim here is to get our bowlers to operate in this physiological loading zone. So that is where there is an equilibrium between my modeling phase and my remodeling phase and that is also the sweet spot on the right hand side. If there is a a very um, swift or rapid increase in bowling workload, it will cause some accumulation of microfracturing and that will cause some stress fractures. Another adaptation of a lumbar spine is we can see what the bone mineral density and the bone mineral content in a fast bowler is much more than in the batters or rugby players or the control group. Furthermore, we can see that the bone mineral density on the, in L4 and L4, the L3 and L4 vertebra, um, on the non-dominant side, it's much higher than on the dominant side. Another adaptation is we can see that the posterior structures of the um, vertebra but the bone mineral density is much higher in that area due to the increased forces in that area. So how are we going to prevent these injuries? We're going to have a look at the workload and give them enough rest. We will have a look at the bowling technique. We will have a look at the lifestyle and then also the strength and conditioning. A survey or a research find that when bowlers uh, bowl more than 39 overs a week, that the chances of break, to break down with a stress fracture is three times higher. Also, you can see as the season progresses and the amount of overs they bowl, those two red circles is where um, they spiked 
and um, typically three to six weeks after the spike, they will break down with a stress fracture. And then, why will rest help? Rest will help to get the equilibrium between bone formation and bone resorption to correct that. It will also um, prevent that the, bones, the bone loses its stiffness, so it will keep the bone strong. It will also re, um, prevent that the strain per delivery doesn't increase, and then it will also um, prevent uh, further micro-damaging. There was a questionnaire on bone health, and they asked the bowlers, have you had, ever had a stress fracture before? Um, have you ever eat breakfast day, or do you eat breakfast daily? Um, do you um, eat dairy daily? Um, they ask them what do they eat for, for, for um, snacks, for breakfast, for lunch, and for evening meals. They ask them if they smoke. They ask them if they drink alcohol occasionally, any fizzy drinks. Um, do they eat, eat greeny leaves? And also they tested their vitamin D levels. And the uh, response to this was very interesting. 52% of the players had stress fractures before. Only one in, three, uh, don't, one in three don't eat dairy daily. 34% drink alcohol more than once a week. 78% don't eat greeny leafy vegetables daily. Um, one in three don't eat breakfast daily. Of those that said they were having breakfast, 63% was, it said that it wasn't adequate enough. And only one in three were screened for vitamin D. 15% uh, of them were smokers, and 58% of them had fizzy drinks quite regularly. So that shows us that there is definitely an area where we can improve on. Um, this is just the effect of um, sleep. So it shows that the more you sleep, the less likely it is that you will break down with an injury. So that's another important thing. Another thing that we do um, at the ground is, or at the club is, we monitor the quality of sleep, the amount of sleep, the um, mood, as well as the muscle soreness. Okay, from a strength and conditioning point of view, we use um, the four top tests, skin folds, yo-yo tests, counter movement jumps, and run twos, it's a speed test, to test the conditioning. And a, and a very interesting thing is, um, there's a sports team that um, had a look at the skin folds, and you can see as the skin folds were getting better over the, the years, the speed tests improved on the far right at the top. Uh, the yo-yo tests improved, so that tests the um, cardiovascular capacity, and also the counter movement jumps improved, so the um, ability to produce power. And I've talked about um, the mobility in a, in, in a fast bowler. It's very important to have a full range of movement in the shoulder, uh, as well as um, internal rotation in the left um, hip joint. The reason for that is, if they don't have that range of movement, they will try to uh, compensate in the bowling technique, and they will um, have uh, excessive lateral flexion, as well as... Um, torsion rotation. And there's just some examples of more um, bowling specific drills that we do with them. And to wrap it up, um, the important things that we need to try to do to prevent injuries is we need to um, avoid spikes. If there's a spike, we need to try to give him a bone holiday. So that means we want to um, get the equilibrium between bone remodeling and bone modeling. Um, we need to gently increase the bowling workloads in your young fast bowlers with a more or less about 15% if possible. Um, you need to establish your high risk um, players. It's usually your younger bowlers that's joining the club and there's a rapid, rapid change in the intensity where we're going from the academy to the professional squad and then go to the international squad. Another key factor is the history of a bone stress injury. Um, and, well, and then we also saw that if they bowl more than 39 overs a week, their chances of breaking down with a stress fracture.